This is Dr. Holt. This problem is number 15 on the UT. I'm going to show you how to solve problem 15, 16, and 17. The first question on 15 is they want to find the component of the net force parallel to the incline. Now I'm going to prove that it's this answer here. Now if you drew your free body diagram of this car, and you can show everything on here. You don't necessarily have to go to that much detail to get the first question, but I'm just going to draw my free body diagram like this. I know this is my mass times centripetal acceleration. So I'll just make that mv squared divided by my radius. This would be mg, and this would be f normal. Now, one thing we do know, let me move this up normal out, with these angles, if I draw a vertical line here, if this is theta here, this has to be theta here. And since this is normal, we'll draw a surface coming straight down here like this. Now we know that this angle has to be a right angle because again, this normal is perpendicular to this. So if this is theta here, this is theta here. Now we know if I have acceleration, my net force must equal to mv squared divided by r. So if I know that, that's a v, and I want to find this component that's going down, would I not just multiply this by the cosine of theta? If I take that value and multiply it by the cosine of theta, I would get the force, the component, let's, let me change this, the component that's pointing down like that. Like this. You have a force coming down just like that. You're getting this particular force. And that's how you do the first problem. It's very, actually a very simple problem. All right, the second problem. The second problem says that if the radius is 50 meters, and the velocity is 63 kilometers per hour, what is theta? With this problem, first thing to do is to determine what the velocity is going to be in meters per second. Now, since we're going 63 kilometers per hour, we can do the unit conversion. We need to be back to meters per second. So I got kilometers here. I put one kilometer here. I put a thousand meters here. My kilometers cancel here and here. I got an hour here, so I put one hour up here. I put 3,600 seconds down here. And when I run that value here, let me cancel this out. So what's going to happen here? Hours cancel out, and you're left with meters per second. And your answer here, if you run that value, is going to give you a value of 17.5 meters per second. All right, so that's your velocity. All right, now just go back to the free body diagram, and we start out with this thing having no friction whatsoever. So I come down here. Again, draw your free body diagram. I come down, straight down. This value is going to be the force of gravity. And that's going to equal to my mass times 9.8. Now we're not given a mass initially in problem number 16, so we're just going to make it m. My normal force is going to go back up like this. Again, this is going to be my angle right here. Let's draw that line. It doesn't look quite straight. There we go. Okay, we'll label this. This is my force normal. All right, so that's my free body diagram with no friction. The only other thing I'm going to have is mass times centrifugal acceleration going in. So I usually do this off. That's away from my free body diagram. I get my mass times centrifugal acceleration, which in this case is going to be my mass times velocity squared divided by the radius. All right, so now all I have to do is write my equations. I know the summation of forces in the y direction. I'm going to let up and down be y, horizontal be x. 
this case it has to be zero okay because I know this car is not going to accelerate through the ramp or leave the ramp and accelerate vertically so I run the equation I will get minus mass times 9.8 plus Fn times the cosine of theta is equal to zero. So I will solve for Fn here. So we'll know that Fn is going to equal to, move this over, of mass times 9.8 divided by the cosine of theta. All right, now we sum the forces in the x direction, and I'll set that equal to mass times centrifugal acceleration, or acceleration, but the only acceleration I'll have will be centrifugal. So I say, well, what's causing this? What's causing this object to go to change velocity? The magnitude's not changing the direction. It's going to be the horizontal component of this. I'm going to let anything go to the left to be positive. So can I not say that Fn times the sine of theta must equal to my mass times velocity squared divided by radius. Okay, again, I'm just summing up the forces set equal mass times acceleration. At this point, I want to substitute back in. I want to take this value right here that I got for normal and put it right back into here. When I do that, I get mass times 9.8 over the cosine of theta times the sine of theta is equal to mass times velocity squared divided by r. All right. Well, we know the sine of theta over cosine theta is tangent theta, and I also notice the masses cancel out, so it doesn't matter what the mass is. So now do I not have that 9.8 times the tangent of theta is equal to velocity squared divided by my radius? Now we're given velocity, or we actually calculated it, well, we were given it in, in kilometers per hour, so we do 17.5 and the radius is 50 meters. So we just come back here, we will substitute back in of 17.5 squared. And again, it's, I'm not as consistent as I should be as far as putting my units in here. You should have this as meters per second, and this should be meters per second squared, and this should be meters. should do a better job of that but again we're going to get the right answers all right so now we're going to solve for tangent of theta so I can say the tangent of theta is equal to 17.5 squared over 50 times 9.8 I take the inverse tangent of that value right there and when I get that I will find that theta is going to equal to 32.00 Five four degrees. So that is the angle. Okay. Now let's go up and let's check to verify that is correct. And that is correct. Okay. Now the question says, with what frictional force must the road push on a 1,200 kilogram car if their driver exceeds the speed for which the curve was designed by 20 kilometers per hour? So that means instead of going 60 three kilometers per hour, but we're going to be going 83 kilometers per hour. All right, we will do that uh, unit conversion real quickly. 83, I'll do it black, sorry. We take 83 kilometers per hour, and we'll do the unit conversion. And you can go back to my work, but basically I, all I have to do in this case is divide by the value of 3.6. So I'll take 83 divided by 3.6 and that's going to give me a velocity of 23.0 and then 5 is going to be uh, repeating so I'll put 556 five, meters per second. All right, that's the velocity we're going to be working with. All right, now all we have to do, again, is draw a good free body diagram, and, just, and it's not important what direction you want to be, what friction to go. And I'm going to do it both ways. It's going to take a little bit more time, but I think it's going to help you understand. You don't want to waste time deciding what direction friction is going to go. Just make, 
just make your mind up and go with it because when we set this up we will find out whether we got it going correctly or incorrectly so I'm gonna make the assumption that friction is going to go up and actually I think I'm going to prove in the math that that is the wrong direction but again it doesn't matter because what you want to do is you don't want to waste time doing spending time uh, trying to analyze things that are really meaningless so again if this is theta here this has to be 90 degrees there this has to be theta here this will be my normal force here this will be my static friction here that's not kinetic it's static and this will be the force of gravity which is equal to mg I'll put 9.8 now I'm gonna go ahead and use the units that were given the mass of the car was given as 1200 kilograms so I'll change this value here to 1200 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared I'll go ahead and do that value 1200 times 9.8 and that gives me a value of 11 1760 newtons going down okay over here I'm going to do mv squared divided by r as my centripetal acceleration so I take 1200 kilograms times my velocity of 23.0556 meters per second we square that we divide that by the radius and I believe that was 50 but let's go back up and check and that is 50 all right now we know the angle here the angle was given as what do we figure out 32 so let's change that right now to we're use the same angle 32.0054 and this is 32.0054 alright now we do the problem exactly the same way as we've done before we sum forces in the y direction we set that equal to zero so when I do that I will get the value here of I'll work with these and work my way down I will get F normal times the cosine of 32.0054 plus FS sine 32 0.0054 minus 11760 is equal to zero. First equation, I do the second equation, summation of forces in the x is equal to mass times acceleration in the x. When I do this, I will get F normal times the sine of 32. 0.0054 minus because going back the other way of fs times the cosine of 32.0054 and it's equal to all this so I'm going to go ahead and run that number and that's going to give me 1200 times the velocity squared divided by 50 <coughs> and that's going to give me a value of 12,757.407 now remember do not include this as like you don't want to do that included on the on the left side of the equal sign it's equal to it's always equal to mass times acceleration because this is not a force this is mass times acceleration all right so now I have two equations, two unknowns. If it was me, I would set this up with the matrices, and that's what I'm going to do. You can also do substitution. It makes no difference to me, but you're going to get the right answer no matter what, as long as you don't make any mistakes. With the math, if you try to do substitution, I think matrices is the easier way to go. I move everything over here is the value. What I like to do, I like to put an equal sign there, so I know it's on the other side. So I come down here, I get the cosine of 32, 0.0054 here I have the sine 
of 32.0054 and move this over and I get 11,760. All right, I could come down here, I put the sign 32.0054. This is going to be negative cosine 32.0054. And over here, I get 12,757.407. Okay, this is a two by three matrices, two rows, three columns. I will grab my calculator. I think I already got everything put in to the into the calculator. So I'm going to run run the matrices and, and I go to reduce row echelon. And I'm going to run that value. I will get Fn is equal to 16,733.8. Seven newtons and Fs is equal to negative 4,585.46 newtons. Now notice I got a negative number. That just means I ha actually have it going the wrong direction. But the so that means the actual magnitude of this is going to, should be going down at 4,585.46. Now let's just go check the number and make sure that we are doing it correctly. And I come over here and I get 4585.47. Let's go back down and see what I have. 4585.46. So basically the same value. Okay, now, I know this takes a little bit more time. I'm going to grab my free body diagram here and I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to show you that it makes no difference because I think that's very essential that you don't waste time with what direction the friction goes. Same problem. The only difference is now I'm going to reverse this and have it going back the other way. Now what changes is this. I will move this over here. Just come on. Move this over here like that. Now this angle will still be 32.04. Right there. So if we move this guy over here, this is my frictional force now. So now everything's the same except I got different directions. So now, can I now go back? I'm going to try to grab all this if I can. And all we have to really do is change a few signs. Bring it up here. Okay. Now, let's go back through this and I'll show you what I mean summation of and y. The only difference is here I'm going to get a negative. Nothing else changes with the summation of, of the y's. I get a negative there. So now when I do the summation of the x's, well I get a positive here. So now when I go back to my matrices, what's changed? I get a negative here and this negative goes away. Everything else is exactly the same. Now I ran that number earlier through the matrices. The only difference is, and you can run it, is this is what's going to happen. You're going to get the positive sign. The normal stays exactly the same. So anyway, very detailed video. I hope this was useful. Um, again, I'm going to repeat this. I know I've said it several times. Do not waste your time deciding what direction friction is going to go. The only time you're going to, dis to determine or where you're going to spend time on the friction is say you want to find maximum velocity that you can go around the track. In that case, you're always going to let your friction go down. If I want to find the minimum velocity and I have a friction problem, I'm going to let the friction go up. Okay, that's the major difference. That's when it does matter. If I'm looking for maxes and min velocities, then the direction of friction is important. Again, point up when I'm looking for a minimum. Point down when I'm looking to maximize my velocity. All right, I wish you guys the best of luck.